Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today, I'm doing a bit of a different video that's intended to target a larger audience. And that audience is anyone who's trying to use Stable Diffusion 1.5 or the latest version of Stable Diffusion, the most advanced open source text to image AI currently available. But maybe you don't have a GPU, you don't have a, a GPU with enough RAM to run the full model, or you're tired of trying to install things and you have a web browser and you just want to use Stable Diffusion as soon as possible. And better yet, uh, maybe you're cheap and you also don't want to pay for it, which I think is fine because it's open source and fortunately there are great options available. So a lot of people have questions, uh, they'll email me and they'll say, oh, so what's the best way to install Automatic 11.11? What's the best way to install this certain software on this platform with this tune model, etc.? And with my channel, there are some channels that only focus on tutorials um, because they want to go for search queries uh, in the YouTube algorithm. And quite frankly, I, I think I just have a greater interest in more of the ethics side and the technology side since I'm a software engineer. And I think my sort of meta-analysis is something that also has just performed better on the platform. However, there, I've gotten a lot of requests from people asking, you know, I've either a younger sibling or a friend that's not technical, someone who just has a browser or maybe someone who even just has an iPad um, who wants to try this stuff out is the best option is to tell them to use something like Midjourney in Discord. Um, if they're not technical enough to use Discord, then what do I tell them? And with all that has gone on, I still think that the Stable Horde project, uh, specifically the Wasm, uh, which is a tool you can use to run fancy software on, on the web, I think they have the best interface and it's, it's simple, it's concise, it's not really complex, it's not meant to be flashy, it's free. It's a little slow, but it's not slower than waiting for a 3060 to finish turning through something. Um, it has the latest Stable Diffusion 1.5 already baked and ready to go, along with about 18 other tuned models. And all the models that show up in the dropdown, I'll show you soon, are uh, models that are actively already installed on every node in Stable Horde. So it means if you select them, you're not gonna be waiting uh, considerably longer. And yeah, uh, the description has the link to this. So click that if you want to follow along and I'm going to click it now. So you click run generator, which kicks off the awesome interface. And this is what you're showing. So quickly, um, you're showing this text box up here where you put in your prompts. This isn't going to cut down anything. Uh, so whatever you put in here, commas, parentheses, etc. Uh, that's all sent raw to the edge node that's going to do the work. Uh, we'll talk about what a trusted worker is a little later on that for 99% of people won't really matter. Um, and this is what you're presented with. So it's basically, you know, 90% of what you'd get with uh, even something like a local installation or a radio interface that maybe you've seen screenshots of or tutorials of on YouTube or Reddit. What's cool here is uh, we have an indicator of which model we're running. So right now, Stable Diffusion 1.5. Uh, so th they call this the generalist model. We have a slider that lets us decide how many images we want. Um, it goes without saying that depending on how many people are contributing their GPUs to Stable Horde at any given time, the time you wait will vary. But so as you can see right now, it's kind of in the evening around 6 p.m. So the time you're going to wait is a little higher just because more people are using this. But then again, it's free. The other thing is that uh, it actually gives you the ability to toggle the NSFW filter and also toggle the sensor, which is something that you don't always get on Hugging Face or even in Google Collabs. I don't think, you know, I, I don't make spicy stuff really. Um, but if that's what you're into, you can do that here. Uh, and then future, and I'll show you some other models. And then also, if you want to turn that off and use furry diffusion or waifu diffusion, uh, you can do that if you want, but we're not doing that right now. And, uh, yeah, they give you some advanced options. So you can set the image size, sampling steps, uh, your classifier guidance scale, and uh, there are even some options for uh, the sampling method. It's kind of cool. And image to image is a new feature they also recently added. If you want, you can sign up for an account and it won't really give you that many more features. I think you can, uh, once you've built some reputation, you can actually submit more images in larger batches. But uh, even, if, even if you don't have an account, you can still use this endlessly as long as you're waiting within reason and that you're not hammering the API to the point that they ban you, which I've tried to get banned and uh, I was not banned. So I'd be surprised if even your six-year-old cousin could get banned using this. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, create an image. So I will say futuristic. Stealth boat in 
stormy seas on the Atlantic. And we'll see what this does. This is loosely uh, influenced by the fact that I've been reading a lot of uh, H.I. Sutton's blog, which is a great uh, 90s themed naval intelligence blog. He has a great write-up on uh, the Ukrainian uh, unmanned stealth boats that they've been using to aim at ships. So that's why I went to see what this prompt creates. Um, so you can see that uh, that loading bar that goes across in light blue, that's basically how long the algorithm has taken to assign your work to a worker. And once that turns dark blue, it means that uh, the worker is actually working on your queued images. And uh, this is about as long as I've had to wait. The longest I've had to wait, I think it was two minutes, but that was for a set of four images at a much higher resolution. So usually you're going, you're, you'll be waiting about 30 to 45 seconds for a, you know, an image to be generated. Um, I picked a bad time to do this because it's peak evening where you know, a lot of people are getting off of work and using this. So we have a few more seconds to wait for this to be generated. See, so actually I'll talk about trusted workers. So trusted workers, um, that just means that the workers that are producing your images uh, are running a little bit of extra code that says, uh, that helps StableHorde make sure that they haven't messed with any of the, the prompts. There was a brief issue right when StableHorde was released where uh, there were some funny people who wanted to troll this by uh, injecting extra words without the user knowing. So the images they got back were a little surprising. And uh, yeah, if you check this, um, it will just basically only use workers that have a above a certain degree of reputation. So if you're worried about that, check that. It's not a extra expense or anything. And uh, yeah, here we have a stealth boat. It looks kind of cool. And let me admit, I'll make something a little more seasonal. So I'll say a uh, furry squirrel wearing a red and white Santa hat winter landscape. And we'll make, we'll, we'll make two of them. Why not generate those? And the wait time, this should, it should be shorter because now, okay, okay, there are 29 workers. Yeah, and you'll see here, like we waited less than 10 seconds to make twice as many images. And there we go. We have a squirrel with a Santa hat in a pine tree and uh yeah, if you want to use this to make free greeting cards that you then uh, sell on Etsy, you know, it works just as well as a local installation, except you're not even paying for it now. So that's this model. Um, let me show you a specialized model. Most of these are Dream Booth. Um, the in-painting models sort of work. Uh, the, the issue is that there's latency between you providing inputs and... Um, the GPU actually rendering it, so th there's much more delay for those. But we'll use Comic Diffusion here. It's a Dream Booth model, and we'll see if this can create some comic looking holiday squirrels. And look at that. That's, and it, what's curious is sometimes the algorithm will actually assign work and then uh, immediately enqueue what you've like sent in. So that's why uh, the light blue and dark blue bars showed up right away. And uh, I only know that because I've run this locally and I've seen that happen in real time. Uh, Cause like I, you can watch stuff come in off the queue and I have some sort of special ways for doing that because I'm an engineer. Um, but yeah, here we go with uh, some more cartoon looking holiday squirrels. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the holiday squirrels and naval stealth boats. Uh, if you're a geek like me with the military stuff, uh, definitely recommend checking out H.I. Sutton's blog uh, and the war zone over at The Drive. If uh, you're more curious, that's how I was introduced to H.I. Sutton's work. Um, I think this little very simple tool is the best way to interface and play around with stable diffusion for people who don't have a lot of experience or maybe use web apps but aren't super technical and uh I, this works on my iphone i'm not sure if this works on everyone's iphone uh, if not the rest api that anyone can freely use 
uh, could be very easily integrated into like a React app if you wanted to do that. And I think there's actually an open source Discord bot for this now as well. So we'll cover that in our next update video on Stable Horde since loads has changed since our last video from like a week and a half ago. And um, yeah, as always, I hope you guys learned something from this. Let me know if you'd like me to change anything or improve something with the channel. And I will talk to you all soon.